What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Outspoken Episode 2. Wow, Episode 2. We oh did my it. God. Wow, we're so far. We did it. <sighs> it's going to be a fun one. That's the theme of today. Sighing. Is a... <sighs> Today, we will be discussing an interview between a very popular Twitter account called Libs of TikTok, where she posts outrageous videos, insane takes, and spreads masses of false information. And maybe we will share a couple of her tweets in a little bit, but there are too many. We just want to give you some background on the interview bef- that we're talking about today before we, like, get into the whole thing. She tweets, like, every hour. It is a mess. Oh, yeah. That's why I was I was looking through her Twitter. I was like, I don't even know if we could share any of these because she tweets every hour. She- and then she retweets her own tweets from the same hour. She just keeps... Constantly... Con- yeah, it's a mess. Her Twitter is a cesspool of misinformation. She started off the account anonymous as yes. an anonymous person, and then she blew up the account as an anonymous person. Yeah. And now, she, and now she's not anonymous. And she's not, because Taylor Lorenz is in 2022... Taylor? She published on the Washington Post the identity of, of the account known as Kaya Rychik. And she was, Kaya was formerly anonymous, being able to spread hate more easily without repercussions. And honestly, I'm glad that her name was put out because her staying protected would continue to give her basically more balls to be disgusting. Yeah. And actually, after Lorenz's article about Kaya and ba- essentially doxing her, I mean, she gave her name. She- yeah, and she, she was a real she was a real estate agent. <laughs> How do you go from being a real estate agent to an independent journalist on Twitter? Oh yeah, she likes to call herself an independent journalist, and I just think that's really funny because can't anyone just call themselves an independent journalist? Like right now, what we're doing, like does that make us independent journalists? I think we're all independent journalists. <laughs> I'm not sure last Anyways, episode. Taylor is an actual journalist. After the article was posted with Kai's name being out there, Tim Pool, good old Tim Pool, if you don't know who that is, you should, you are a good, you should be happy, a beanie <laughs> boy. And the Daily Wire CEO, Jeremy Boring, purchased a billboard <laughs> in Times Square. I'm sorry? sorry, not his last name being Boring. That's so funny. That is so funny. Honestly, I wish my last name was Boring. <laughs> No, <laughs> say I'm interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they actually put on a billboard, and if you're watching this, you can see it. It, it says Taylor Lorenz doxed at lives of TikTok, just on this billboard thingy, and Taylor tweeted about it. That's honestly just kind of like a promo for her. Like that doesn't seem like a diss to me. That doesn't feel like an own or a diss. Well, you just got owned by your name being out. Like they're just gonna go search your name now, but yeah, whatever. Now you get publicity from it, and you might want that as a journalist. Some background on Kaya Raychik, who is libs of TikTok. Take a shot for every time I said that. Actually, don't because it's probably already been five times. She reposts a steady stream of TikTok videos and social media posts, primarily from LGBTQ people, often including incendiary framing designed to generate outrage. Don't know if I said that word right, but her content is amplified by high profile media figures, politicians and right wing influencers, and her tweets reach millions. Libs of TikTok has become an agenda setter in right wing online discourse and the content it services shows a direct correlation with the recent push in legislation and rhetoric directly targeting the LGBTQ community. Also, just want to state this was in April 2022. So there was a lot of stuff going on during that. This is from this is from Taylor's article. That's why it was hard for me to. That's why it was mm. a mouthful. I'm not too too intelligent with with words. Oh, I did. That's your big word guy, Mr. English major. Actually, I am. I went to college for journalism and then aeronautical engineering, and then I quit. Big words. Her account was promoted by Joe Rogan and a bunch of other people. She. Little- I've seen almost every single like conservative online figure talk about her and like you know agree with her and help push the agendas that she's pushing did you know she appeared anonymously on tucker carlson's show yes i knew she um was anonymous a couple years ago a couple years ago on the tucker carlson tucker carlson i cannot say his name either (sighs) tucker carlson there we go i'm gonna use it as a tongue twister tucker carlson Essentially, she doxxed herself because when she did register her domain, lives of TikTok.us, she used her full name and cell phone number. And that's kind of how people got her information because she was a real estate agent. So now we're going to watch the interview. It happened a few days ago (sighs) of the time of this recording. I'm sure you guys have heard of lives of TikTok if you're in the LGBTQ space. Um, She literally hates us (laughs) and pushes the the most wrong information you can think of. You'll see. It's just what happens when people have brain rot. (laughs) 
So thank you so much for meeting. First of all, I saw Seth Dillon today saying that you guys are no longer affiliated. What happened with there? I know that he invested in you early, was a huge supporter of you. What happened to that relationship? Uh, just parted ways. For what reason? Personal reasons. Yeah? Yeah. What happened? You didn't align with Totally them. amicable. I love Seth. Yeah. He's a great mentor. So if you guys don't know who um, Seth Dillon is, Seth Dillon is the CEO of the Babylon Bee which is basically just this conservative Christian, like, satire news website. If you guys have heard of The Onion, it's basically just that, but... The opposite. <laughs> the opposite of Christian conservative news, and it's so bad. If you ever want to check it out, it's you can make a good, like, cringe and drink or cringe and smoke game out of it, I'm sure. It's pretty bad. Them parting ways is interesting, though. Like, he has to be an extremist for sure. I don't know. Oh, I don't, yeah, know, much about, I don't know much about it. It him, has but. to be. It is literally like her brain, but a website, if you can think about it. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, like, it would just be full of nothing, like blank pages of just nothing. It's just the stupidest, like, way you can think about, like, you know, what they think of us as woke people. Right. Yeah. Like, it's just honestly embarrassingly bad. <laughs> What got you into all this? I've always wanted to ask you. I know, I mean, I wrote about sort of the history of your Twitter account, but how did you get involved in politics? Uh, if you watch any of my interviews, I talk about this all the time. But uh, just, you know, COVID radicalized me. Yeah. In what way? And they were like forcing us to wear masks and not letting us leave our homes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not letting us work and, and, and people losing their jobs. Uh, and then people now forcing a vaccine, uh, an experimental vaccine, people dying from the vaccine. Okay. I also love do, how Taylor's wearing a mask. Do uh, Yeah. On, sometimes, I feel like she did it on purpose. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, so. So you like, don't want your right? nasty fucking germs, bitch. <laughs> I would have been, you know, bitch nasty. So how did that get you interested in LGBTQ issues? I got, it got me interested in politics. And then... It, and then uh, once I was interested in politics, I... Also, sorry, can we just talk about the whole, and just the way she described COVID? This is just, like, so stupid. It's so fucking stupid. How does that radicalize you that much? Yeah, we were forced to do this and that. Yeah, okay, so you had to stay home because there was something spreading and they didn't want you to get it because it was killing people. Right. Like, oh, no, you couldn't be fucking... Couldn't sell houses. Oh, no. Like, also, um, just thinking, like, she asked why she got into LGBTQ issues, yeah, which oh, yeah, always yeah, yeah. bothers me, which why is that considered politics? That's human rights stuff. That's not politics. Why is our our existence politics? You know what I mean? I mean, people's rights are political. Why? Being able to have rights is political. Why? That's a good question. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. Why? I don't know. <laughs> why, why is that a thing? Why aren't we? Why? <laughs> I don't know. That just always bothers I, 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 me. That's a great point. Um, <laughs> why, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President Joe Biden, why con, are our rights... Constitution. Mr. <laughs> why whatever. are our rights political and not just rights? Thank you. <laughs> I stumbled upon this, um, this whole movement and I was absolutely appalled by what I was seeing. Appalled by what? Um, the, radi the radicalization of it... Um, the the way that they come after our most innocent and vulnerable population or our kids. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, oops, the way that it makes it makes there's nothing logical about it. There's nothing. Lo I don't even know what the fuck she's saying. This is just ma this is mouth garbage right now. Yeah. Also, she showed up to this oh interview my God. with um, a T-shirt of Taylor Lorenz crying. She's wearing a picture so cool. uh, of Taylor, of the interviewer who's interview, interviewing her crying. Like, you're weird. She, <laughs> isn't she also like our age or like 28 or something? Kaya? Uh, yeah. I have no idea. She is. Uh, she is. I believe she's around our age. There's nothing logical about topping off kids' body parts. There's nothing logical about giving kids porn in school. Um, there's, there's two sexes and that's it. So, you know, anything out of that, it's just based on lies and nonsense. Yeah. Did you grow up, I know you grew up in a sort of a more conservative community. Did you know any LGBTQ people growing up? What was your exposure to that community just in life prior to sort of understanding the world through politics? So I did also want like porn in school. 
porn in school. So sex ed. Yeah. That was, that's Sorry. what she's referring so to. She is you 28. You're telling me that's not a 40 year old woman? Yeah, that is a 28 year old woman. That is a person. I, wait, am I 28? I'm 28. <laughs> You're 28. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot. I thought it was 27. <laughs> okay. Wow. I would never, that, ever do that. that that's what. That's what happens to you when you're a dumb bitch. <laughs> Just saying. Like, where's this fucking picture we have of her? <laughs> you bring up the receipt. This bitch ugly. <laughs> I thought this woman was literally like in her 40s with kids. Oh my lord. Okay. Um, I never really paid attention to it. So you didn't have any LGBTQ friends or anything, no. family members? No. So your first exposure to the LGBTQ world was through basically learning about it through the, the media ecosystem? Uh, through themselves, actually. They would say exactly what they what their intentions are, what their whole movement is about. Uh -huh. So I learned about it through watching their own videos. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I Yeah. What sort of videos were you watching? I mean, are you just all talking the about ones, the TikToks that you share? And, stuff? and tons more on TikTok. It's all over TikTok. Yeah. Very easy to find. How are you in your mid-20s just learning about the LGBTQ She's community? She's lying. Well, you're a liar. I grew up in a, like, a conservative Christian community, but... Oh my God! Like, how would you just not know anything? Maybe if she was fifty, I sure, get it. Sure. Yeah, like, how are you going to be growing up in the same like internet age as us, not ever, ever being exposed to a single LGBTQ thing? You're I mean, not me doing the Donald Trump thing. <laughs> a single LGBTQ a single, thing. She's a fucking liar. She's a liar. Or she's just stupid. She's a big outrageous liar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. I don't know. I yeah. What sort of videos were you watching? I mean, are you just all talking the, about ones, the TikToks that you share and, stuff? and tons more on TikTok? It's all over TikTok. Yeah, very easy to find. Yeah, um, I'm curious. You know, I I feel like there's been, especially on um, my colleagues have done great reporting on sort of like this rift on Twitter. I know that you have a very conservative fan base, and in your comments sometimes you'll see a lot of commentary about sort of the great replacement theory. What are your thoughts? On, what are your thoughts on that? We had to look this up. And in the, honestly, this is fucking insane. If you guys do not know what the great replacement theory is, you want to take it away? You want me to go? How about I read it, but then you say it in simpler terms because you're smarter? We'll see if I can. We'll see. <laughs> this is just uh, fucking insane. I mean, the great replacement theory is an ethno-nationalist theory warning that an indigenous European, for example, white population is being replaced by non-European immigrants. The great replacement concept was popularized by French writer Renaud Camus in his 2012 book, La Grande Remplacement, The Grand Replacement. <laughs> okay, so I guess in simple terms, that just means that uh, these people are afraid that there will no longer be purebred white people anymore. Now that, you know, like they just, they can't comprehend that the United States of America is a melting pot country and they just can't understand. I mean, it's also against uh, interracial dating. You know, they're afraid that, you know, if you marry someone that is not the same race, then we're just going to keep creating less and less white people. <laughs> and Oh my God, that's so scary. It's so scary. You know, I'm so terrified and it, of that. It's also because scientists have been, or, sci or somebody, I don't know, but there's been theories that, you know, probably like in a hundred years that there'll be, that this country won't really have white people. We'll all be kind, everyone would be kind of mixed. <gasps> which honestly... That sounds <gasps> awesome. Who gives a shit? Literally, who gives a shit? Like, honestly, we do need less white people. Get them the fuck out. They're <laughs> ugly. I don't I don't like seeing them Aryan looking asses. I don't mm -mm. What are your thoughts on your common your, the comments on your post telling me to kill myself? Horrible. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. Obviously against that. Yeah. So would you come out and and condemn that publicly? Oh, I would condemn it anytime. I'm against, you know, I'm against murdering anyone of course so you're against death threats against against me i yeah i'm i would i'm a big you know as somebody that's dealt with a lot of online harassment i don't i don't defend uh threatening to murder anyone but i guess i'm curious you know because a lot of times it comes after an attack from the, in the media like some, someone like you or another journalist what kaya wants to happen right now is because taylor gave her name in the article and doxed her. Technically doxed her. Um, she, I think she just wants Taylor to, to admit to that, but she's not. She's not. Yeah. Because she keeps deflecting the, the question. You'll notice a lot that uh, Kaya Rychik, um deflects a lot of Taylor's questions. Um, 
back into the point. She's like, I get death threats. It's like, okay, you literally, that's your job. Like your whole job is literally sending your conservative Christian followers to attack and bully innocent LGBTQ people. Oh, yeah. Um, by the way, there's been 33 accounts where that has happened, and that comes up later in the video. Yeah. Uh, there are 33. 33 that lives accounts. That TikTok. That have put people's lives in danger or death or beaten or anything you can think of. Mm-hmm. She's been the reason. 33. She's been the reason. So. Ooh, but now that she's but, not anonymous. But she gets some death threats. You'll see. <laughs> I get them all the time. Like ugh. some of your audience says we should chop off kids' body parts. How do you think? What do you think about that? I I I don't know what you're talking about. Like a girl says she wants to be a boy, so she chops off her breasts. I'm a big, seri- uh, you know, I believe in personal liberty and bodily autonomy so, personally. So kids should be able to cut off their breasts if they think that they're boys. Kids aren't doing that. <clears throat> kids aren't doing that. Kids aren't doing that. We already know that that's already a false narrative that is consistently spread by the. Uh, right, the alt right. I've went, I've literally statistically have proven many different things in so many of my YouTube videos. If you guys ever want to check them out at my trans YouTube videos, yeah, I don't feel like Tim we have Collins. to actually go in there and give you a literal mm-hmm. research because right. if you're watching they're this, you know bored. they don't, they're not doing that. <laughs> you, nowhere is doing that. Nobody is doing that. Yeah, we're so, bring, bringing in little Timmy today, who's five, and we're gonna just. I mean, it's been constantly, constantly, say. constantly proven that. People like Kaya and, you know, all these stupid conservative public figures have been known to just stage news oh, yeah. to spread. Oh, yeah. For, uh, on these topics, especially. Actually, that's actually in this interview, too. Is that? Remember? You'll, you'll okay. remember. You'll I was say. just getting brain rot listening to this. Yep. So, I mean, I believe in gender ideology. I guess I, I personally, my, my feeling is that I believe in personal liberty. I grew up in a town where a lot of people for their middle school graduation, women got nose jobs. I knew somebody that got a boob job at age 14. And I I guess I struggle to kind of understand the criticism when there's certainly no criticism of that sort of thing, right? But then there's criticism of this other sort of gender affirming, you know, stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I remember girls on the soccer team would get their nose broken and then come to school after getting, get nose jobs or. I knew girls who would get boob jobs as their graduation present, things like that. At a certain age, I think like 16 or 17, most people will let you get plastic surgery with parental consent. You know, I have, I know plenty of influencers who started getting plastic surgery before the age of 18 and fillers and all that fun stuff. And um, we never talk about how uh, cis people go through gender affirming care all the time. I mean. No, I mean, even, no, like you were saying, younger girls as well. Like, even younger girls, um, if there's... Birth control. Uh, oh, man. Can't even <laughs> oh, get man. into that one, but, there, like... There's tons of... There's tons of that stuff. I started... I stuff later in here, too. I started going to the gynecologist pretty young. Was You know, as soon as I started my period, because I needed stuff. Like, I needed a special medication to help control my period. Wouldn't that be gender-affirming? In a way, anything or no? Do, I mean, I think anything to do with your gender... And having it, yeah, like I always prescribe certain period. medication yeah. to help control my period, so I like, would stop missing so much school. As like a thirteen-year-old, honestly, <clears throat> women shouldn't even have to go to anything when they have their period. But a people, feminist people, king, feminist king, hearing a boy being allowed to chop off his penis to a teenage girl getting a nose job. Um, well, just to be extra clear, I don't believe that thirteen-year-olds are able to make those sort of medical decisions. Minors are, yeah. Oh, really? And where? Yeah. Um, Children's National Hospital in D.C. gives 16-year-old hysterectomy. Oh, 16. False. False. <laughs> False. You can fact check it. False. Um, I actually have the photo right here. The spokesperson also has denied that Children's National performs hysterectomies for minors. Uh, quote, none of the people who were secretly recorded by this activist group deliver care to our patients. End quote. They said... Quote, the information in the recording is not accurate. We do not perform gender affirming hysterectomies for anyone under the age of 18. And you have to think about the word there, gender affirming, because there are plenty of reasons, medical emergencies that would cause anyone of any age to need a hysterectomy. hysterectomy. Mm-hmm. Like if you mm-hmm. that, I mean, it's unfortunate. Children get cancer, too. Children get cancer, what too. Should we do? Oh, no, we're not. We're just going to leave it. Oh, no. That would cause, 
either you, know, you can get breast cancer as a child, you can get ovarian whatever. or whatever, you know, Ridiculous. where those things have to happen. And that's why they had to specify gender affirming. You know, and yeah. so they so the but that lets people like her take those things out of context, like knowing that maybe a, a 13 or 14 year old got breast cancer and had to have a what is it called a mastectomy? No, you ignorant. Yeah. Yeah, it's called a mastectomy, mastectomy. right? Right. Um, mastectomy, double mastectomy or yeah. whatever or whatever. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be double. Like I knew a girl in school who had to get a well, just one boob cut off because she had breast cancer as like a 14 year old. That's where they're getting this information from. Yeah. And it's just sad. Yeah. It's like these poor, like nobody's doing this unless it's a medical emergency. And you can, uh, and you can get like, I started HRT at 17 and I don't even want to talk about that stuff. But there's, if, if something has to happen though, like going on hormones or something like that, there are insane, there are insane amounts of steps. Yada yada yada. My birth control that I started at fifteen or sixteen had oh, estrogen that's okay. in it. No, but that's okay. And it was gender affirming. It it's actually okay for ma young... ma it made me have bigger hips. Mm -hmm. it's okay. I was a stick figure. Then all of a sudden, I got hips after because of my birth control had estrogen in it. Yeah, you could take birth control uh, <laughs> at, at this age, but um, you know, you 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 actually can't be transgender unless you're like eighteen plus. Like you won't know. Whatever. We don't know the effects of HRT on young people. Meanwhile, you take out a birth control list in like the, the mm -hmm. stupid paper. I Oh my God, it's like- Girls have shown me. It's insane. 16 year olds. They gave me that, they told me that directly. They said 16 girls and younger. That's what they said. So, so hysterectomies, um, there are definitely minors. I know for sure as young as 12 who are getting uh, double mastectomies. Um, they allow they definitely allow vaginoplasties for minors um, and phalloplasties. I'm not aware of a specific case of a minor, but they allow 18 year olds. Yeah, because you're 18. Wasn't her whole thing on minors? I think there was like a a singular or like two cases where a t like a, a 12 year old. I don't even think they were 12. Admitted, I don't know what it was, but where that did happen, and it was it was. Wasn't that, it, that's wasn't a whole it like not even in this country discussion? I think it was. I, oh. I covered it in the video once. But she just literally admitted to herself that 18 year olds are choosing to do things that they want to do with their body. You could. That's the whole point of being 18 is now you can do whatever the fuck aren't you, you aren't want. Aren't you an adult now? I, aren't you, aren't you a the consenting second I adult turned 18, that Andrew Tate wants? I went and got a tattoo. The, literally on the day of my 18th birthday, I went and got a tattoo because guess what? I was an adult and I didn't need my mommy or daddy there to tell me or anyone to tell me no. I had full body autonomy and i got to choose what i wanted to do not true can we just talk about this can we she loves that photo if you guys aren't on visual shannon is loving this photo i just love when haters are and dumb people are just this that ugly and i know like that makes me seem shallow and like i shouldn't body shame or whatever but when when you're a bad person free game i don't care if i was a bad person you are you transphobic so unattractive well, kaya I don't know where you get off. I, I would be anon if I, anonymous if I were you too, with that fucking busted ass face of yours. Anyways. <laughs> you know, okay, 18 so, year olds, you're an adult, but let's just get back to the great replacement stuff. Cause I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that whole ideology? There were some months over the past three years that there were more illegals coming into our border than children being born in the US. Is that not, does that not look like they're trying to replace us? I guess uh, sort of imagine America in a as new a, population. a melting pot. Isn't that sort of what America was founded? No, on? but they're they're actually bringing in more people than are actually being born. So we're back to the great replacement theory again. So people are coming to the USA because they want to, and then they're having kids. Mm -hmm. So that so that's like that's an issue. Yeah. Oh, so and that yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, what. Last night, I I checked her Twitter, libs of TikTok, um, just to try to find anything, but it was hard because she literally reposts her own stuff every hour and posts every hour. Um, right now, she's really obsessed with uh, immigrants or basically anyone who's not white American. Um, and you'll notice that she constantly retweets the, like mugshots. If you're not a citizen, but you committed a crime here, She's going to retweet your fucking mugshot and she's going to come after you as if like. But I just, to me, it just bothers me. So if, I, if you kind of get where I'm trying to go, like. American citizens commit crimes too. these exact same crimes. 
I just wanted to pull this up really quickly. I wanted to Google uh, immigrant versus American. Uh, I didn't mean to type in cities, but whatever. Um, I just wanted to Google the crime rate and it says research in the U.S. tends to suggest that immigration either has no impact on the crime rate or even that immigrants are less prone to crime. I mean, yeah, you didn't Wikipedia. even mean to search what you did, and that's still just a banger point. Like, she is so obsessed with every time a non-citizen, let me tell you, a, a brown non-citizen. No one ever gets about Canadians. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know plenty of illegal <laughs> Canadian, Ill, 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 Canadians Ill, here, but we don't talk about them. Anyway, so yeah, if you're a brown non-citizen, she's going to be obsessed with you and your crime, even though... And she loves you. Think about how much she, she thinks about you before she goes to yep. bed. And she's going to re keep retweeting it and retweeting it and retweeting it and act like white American citizens do not commit the same amount of crime, if not worse. It sounds like you sort of do ascribe to this theory of the Great Replacement. Um, how does that make I just you look feel? at the facts and the numbers. Well, so, I mean, just let's give a corollary, right? A lot of Jewish people fled, you know, Europe came over here also as immigrants. Um, and there's a lot of criticism towards Jewish people in those movements, in those far right movements. So I'm just wondering as a Jewish woman, sort of how you feel about that and your role in cultivating this fan base that might think of you as an as a as a minority, an outsider. Uh, not all cultures are equal. What does she mean by that? I don't know what that means. I don't either. Is she just saying that like. Like it's OK if you're white and you come here? Yeah, she was like, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So. I know you have a lot of concerns about educational materials and books, library books and things, um, especially. They're importing people who want to destroy America. <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry, you probably broke your ears. <laughs> They're importing people who want to destroy America. <laughs> yes. Okay, Donald Trump. <laughs> she just keeps changing the topic or like not answering the question that she's being asked and is driving me insane, I think. I think I'm getting brain rot from this and I think that's the issue. I mean, that's a whole tactic <laughs> that a lot of people uh, like her like to use is deflection. So you'll be at, they'll ask you a question and then they'll be like, you'll say, hey, what do you think about broccoli? And they'll be like, well, the movie that I saw last week was really bad. What did you think about that? It's like, what, that has nothing to do with broccoli. Just to skip ahead, we, at the moment, we know she's a racist, an uneducated racist, and uh, doesn't understand any other viewpoint besides her own. And if nobody believes in it, then she hates them. That's basically where we're at right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had to chop off this interview a lot because she doesn't answer half of the questions. And if she does, it's kind of a circular conversation. So, so yeah. we've chopped this up quite a bit. We're now... We're moving on to this beautiful, this beautiful... You know, one of our favorite topics. Mm -hmm. You know, just back to the sort of education stuff, I know that you're interested in removing a bunch of books from libraries um, that you consider inappropriate. I was just wondering, out of all the books that you've sort of tried to get removed, how many have you read? I've read a couple of them. Uh-huh. Which ones? Um, Gender Queer. Uh-huh. I've read This Book is Gay. Uh-huh. Um, I've read uh, Flamer, My Shadow is Pink. Uh, it feels good to be yourself. Mm -hmm. There's so many more, tons of them. It feels good to be yourself. That's like a nice book title. I know. So <laughs> I looked up some of these books. So Gender Queer is um, the reading age is 18 and up. So that's definitely not in elementary schools then. Nope. And My no. Shadow is Pink is actually about, it's a story that touches subjects of the gender identity and self-acceptance, equality and diversity. Inspired by the author's own little boy, the main character likes princesses and fairies and blah, blah, blah. It's basically saying, hey, if you're a boy or girl and you like stereotypical boy or girl yeah. things, it's okay. Children do not have to have gendered toys. You don't have to have a gendered, you know what I mean? Like as a, as a child, you can like what you like. And I feel like I hate that. That's what they're so against. Like I never played with girl toys growing up. And look at me, I'm so hyper feminine now, but... That didn't affect anything. I just preferred playing with dinosaurs and dragon toys that were commonly found in the boy toy section. And sometimes it would confuse family members. They'd be like, oh, I thought, you know, this was something for your brother. But I'm like, no, that's what I wanted. I wanted that dinosaur set. And nobody made a big deal about it. And here I am. Well, I am queer. So maybe that's the issue. That is the issue. See, <laughs> I, did, I played with those types of toys, too. And guess what? <gasps> My gender got transed. I got transed. Yeah. If I got one of those Bratz dolls for I specific uh, for oh, I Christmas, oh, I would spiral. 
I, I like. I shaved the Barbie's head. I, I used to get Bratz dolls and then buy um, boy Barbie clothes and put them on them. So they were like. Are you transgender? Are you no, FTM? No, they were just lesbians. <laughs> it would make them little lesbians. I didn't even know what I was doing. I just thought they looked cool in the boy clothes with their with their like big lips and stuff. Anyways, most of those books weren't even that bad. I think Flamer was one that actually was not that good. Mm. I did very vague research on it, but most of the books she's bringing up, and this is what they like to do, is they take something and they just make it into something that it is not. Oh, this is a straw man argument. That's there all. we go. I just want to know what schools are using these books. That's all. I, I haven't really heard much of it. And I know that people are, you know, if they don't want their kids taught, like, I mean, I wasn't really taught sexuality and gender things too, I don't know, too much when I was like f between four and eight. Well, actually I was, maybe like getting closer to eight. I knew the difference between boys and girls and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you know the difference and you kind of learn that, you start learning about body parts and stuff like that. I mean, girls start puberty as early as eight. Her sort of notion of free speech and free expression and allowing all of that stuff with wanting literature removed and wanting access to information removed. What kind of literature? You tell me. Uh, porn. Gay porn. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what do you consider gay porn in these books? Uh, so you want you want to see it? Are you talking about the stuff that you've tweeted, basically? You you can see yeah, it like there's pictures of like blowjobs and like how to have gay sex with like naked people and people masturbating and stuff. Yeah. Did you like pictures I, of it? Oh, yeah. totally. And yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. You know, I, I guess speaking of deleting posts, you still have a post up accusing the Uvalde shooter of being trans. Um, obviously, that's been debunked. Yeah, there's a community note on it. Uh huh. So yeah. why not remove that post if you're so comfortable with removing posts? Because there's a community now. I think it's clear. It's it's obviously it was obviously it was unintentional. It was it, there was a watermark on it. It was from a meme uh, an account that was going around. Um, and I'm glad there's a community now so people know that. Do you that was a do you believe if say a journalist posts something factually incorrect or wrong? Okay, so yeah, um she is basically one of the main people responsible for the spread misinformation that <laughs> cute that the Uvalde uh shooter was a trans woman, correct? Trans woman? Yeah, there was this entire um, this entire there was like a bunch of photos of different trans women who looked like the who was the Uvalde shooter, Salvador Ramos, who is also not trans. Never and has never and identified or even thought about being trans. trans. Never, never even tried or pretended or whatever. Anyway, these three trans women's pictures, that all three separate, were spread around and they had nothing to do with the shooting at all, which I think is really sad that these poor women's lives were heavily affected by this, I'm sure. You know, seeing their face blasted everywhere for being, you know... An M word. Yeah, she keeps it up. She keeps those pictures up. Yeah, she just keeps it up because now there's a community note on it. So now it's okay for it to be kept up. So it's just ridiculous. Like how, how stupid these people are and how easy it is to spread misinformation. Candace Owens also talked about this, by the way. I was so, you know. Oh, yeah, she also spread this. So it was like a, it was a false yeah. narrative that was spread everywhere. Because I remember hearing about women. this, but I don't think I ever heard or I don't think I ever got to hear the point that the Uvalde shooter wasn't trans. Yeah, I, I, mean, I never found. I just knew me that neither. me. I don't remember anyone talking about that. I remember them talking about the shooter being trans, but never. No, that was wrong. So that's just how you know how things are spread. That lie spread so much quicker than the truth did. So. Yep. And because they're obsessed with trans people. And so I guess knowing that you've posted wrong information, you're saying it should stay up and everybody else should be allowed to keep whatever they have up as well. That, is that sort of your stance? Am I accurately understanding it? Um, is there a law against... No, I'm not asking a law. I'm just asking your personal sort of opinion. I'm just kind of curious because it seems like you have come after other people, such as vSphere and other critics, saying, you posted wrong information about me, take it down. I totally get that. That's your prerogative. It's different be with defaming um, a, a journalist like that. They're, they're defaming me. She is so for free speech, and it doesn't matter if she talks about something wrong you know like it happens oopsies but as soon as somebody says anything about her that's probably true she's ready to sue she's mm. literally suing people mm. for defamation okay. and went you know okay you're right like even though but she acts like what she's doing is not defamation to anybody and you don't think that calling a shooter trans when they weren't trans is defaming anyone uh no yeah uh, no no it's not defaming anyone not the trans people who are involved in whatever no, no. 
No, I think innocent. those I think those three trans women's faces got spread out, yeah. uh, spread through the internet more than the actual shooter's face, which is sad. You're a dumb bitch. How'd you originally sort of, what had Oklahoma get on your radar as opposed to I, some others? Because I started posting about the stuff going on in schools there, um, you know, like I do across the country. And then, you know, people, you know, people were very upset that this was happening in their schools. What was happening in their schools? Trent stuff? Right. Okay. So yeah. there's this tweet, and um, now we're referring to Oklahoma because of Next Benedict. Rest in paradise. By the way, I'm, I'm sure all of you have heard about the non-binary student. That was that was. I have a couple of tweets here that I'm going to read for you. So um, this is by Matt XIV. It says, Kaya Rychik targeted that child school district in 2020 and got a queer teacher fired. A month ago, the superintendent put her on the state's Department of Education. Today, the child is D word. Unalived. And Kaya is waltzing around Los Angeles. I'm so angry, man. A an effing child. That's what Matt said. And then somebody else said, this is the face of a psychopath. Kaya Rychik, the head of lives of TikTok, thinks it's funny when what she says causes people to be threatened, being, and even k word this chick should be in a padded cell not on social media and this is her holding up what shannon was showing earlier if you're watching visual there is a there's a picture of her with newspaper and it just it's like talks about her and she's laughing in it and this was right after um this the was stuff with her, next happened this was kaya's technical first response to finding out that her stuff about next resulted in them getting that is beaten to a point to that they are now not alive. That is and so disturbing. that was Kaya's first post after finding that out. Yeah. Disgusting. And that's what Taylor's asked, literally asking. Speaking of Oklahoma, obviously we saw the tragic death of Nex, um, you know, a yeah, young child. Tragic. I'm curious about your reaction. Um, you know, you posted a selfie shortly after people were asking you to address the issue and you said, you know, to, to the haters and the losers, who are you addressing in that statement? I forgot about that part. I forgot that she that was she the posted, caption. That was the caption with that to the haters and the losers. Okay, well we'll put that up on the screen for the visual. Uh, people watching on YouTube. Wow. But if not, it um, it's still up. Yeah, it's probably still up. Anyone who hates me and anyone who's a loser. Okay, why would you choose to post that in response to people asking you to speak about this child's death? It was not a response to that. I guess why would you post that prior to making any statement? about Nex's death. So, just to be clear, you're trying to police me on when I'm allowed to post selfies? No, I'm just curious. I wanted to post it. I thought it was a cute picture. And I just decided to post it. You thought it was a cute picture? You're so fucking that's ugly. That's not even a cute you're, picture. Okay. Mm it's very tragic. Uh -huh. It's horrible. Do you believe Nex should have been allowed to receive gender-affirming care? Uh, she should not be allowed to go on irreversible puberty blockers or get sex change surgery. She. How dare you misgender a not alive child, you fucking asshole. No. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you, Kaya Reichick. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kaya Reichick, come on our come on our podcast. Come on your podcast. You're, you're, you're so outspoken. You're, actually, honestly, she'd be one of the worst guests. She's such an idiot. She actually hasn't. She doesn't respond to like half of these questions. That's why this is such a it, why horrible it's so hard interview. to watch. It's just brain rot. The fuck you. How dare you misgender that poor fucking child? Mm hmm. Mm. You know, if you eradicate transgenderism, which I believe you suggested in a post today. No, I never suggested that. Oh, okay. You reposted a post that was advocating for that. What would happen to the people that have already medically, socially completely transitioned and are leading happy lives? What would happen to them? I mean, what's your plan for, for that? If transgenderism doesn't exist, which it seems like you're, that's what you believe, what happens to all the people living happy lives as trans people? Well, it, First of all, the whole trans is it's based on a lie. You can't change your you can't change your gender. Okay, but so they could they could go live their 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 life. I mean, I can't tell someone what to do in their in their house. So they go into a whole circular argument about this entire thing. She's like, I don't think that they should. I think that whatever, blah blah blah. Like she just evades basically the entire question. No, she just acts like she, she says the same thing she like acts 10 times. like it's like you know it's fine. They can do what they want, but I want them not alive as well. Yeah, she just hates. I don't know. She's just stupid. I guess I'm wondering what the material harm is. Aside from it's maybe something that you disagree with, as in your version of the truth is different than their version of the truth. 
what is the material harm of them living their life as a woman or man or gender that you don't agree Not with? anything that's wrong is there a material harm necessarily. So there's no harm? I didn't say that. So can you name a single harm? Uh, the way that it's pushed, on, it's pushed on to kids, first of all. What's pushed on to kids? Uh, gender ideology, transgenderism. Uh -huh. No. And this is why we have to be done with this anyways. <laughs> Because the rest of this stuff is just—it's just, so just I'm—I feel like I'm rotting. Educating is not pushing something onto somebody, no. though. No, it's not. I understand that you might be like weirded out by the drag, the drag thing, or educating younger, um, younger people. Like, hey, some people have two mommies, and some people have two daddies, and some people used to be a girl or used to be a boy. I don't understand how that's pushing. I don't. It's not and that's like they can't process that in their brain like they just assume anything lgbtq equals sexualization and that's the issue is they don't see hetero culture as sexual but they see the entire lgbtq culture as sexual mm -hmm. inherently there are sexualities but they're but being like lesbian isn't sexual being no. a gay man isn't sexual being no. transgender isn't sexual it's no. a sexuality not transgender but so it's being straight that's still sexuality and we don't even have to get into how the, the straighties push, like, sex onto children all the time. But you don't have – you guys already know. Just look up baby clothes. <laughs> look up baby clothes and how it's like – Yeah, I don't even want to say it. I feel gross saying it. But you guys know what we're talking about. So you just believe gender is, is a lie. And what if somebody said to Trans, you – you can't change your gender. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what if somebody said to you, you know, you're not a real woman? You're not a real woman because maybe you don't you don't meet these certain specific definitions of femininity. That's fine. I don't care. They can call me whatever you want. But what if you would be forced to live by that system? Do you think it's fair that you would, you know, be forced? Is that to based live? in like science? Well, I don't think any of it's really based in science. Well, it is. Gender is a sexes. social construct. Well, g well, gender is actually made up. Exactly. What exactly. The? Literally. And then Lisa <laughs> TikTok goes on to say that gender doesn't exist. I don't understand her brain. I really don't. I so I I don't know. So I don't understand. Can somebody get this girl help? Can we look at her brain? Can we get an MRI scan? Can we donate her brain to science so we can study how people get this stupid? She follows that up with saying that um a pedophile created gender. Oh, by the way, right. Sorry, I, I never got the chance to look that up. But um, if anybody, I mean, I'll look it up after this, but. And she talks about gender affirming care, gender affirming care, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And then. Yeah, I don't know where she got that information from about the pedophile, pedophilia being the reason that. Uh, yeah, pedophile created gender. Can you just. She does say that. I don't oh know why. Oh my God. I'm literally just reading my notes on this. Genuinely, the rest of this interview, we chopped it up so much. They talk about the same things and then affirming gender. And then Libs of TikTok is like. Oh, uh, she doesn't have an an a true, good, educated answer for any question. And I honestly feel bad for Taylor having to sit with this girl for that long and just not get any substance, anything of she substance. Nothing. She basically answered none of the questions. And the, her main point in this entire thing, when it comes down to it, so you don't have to painfully listen to the whole thing is um, I just don't want them sexualizing kids. And it's like, okay, do you remember in middle school when uh, girls had to wear uh, shorts that were X amount of inches above the knee? Couldn't wear tank Because tops, it was distracting. Had to have your shoulders. Yeah. Because well, it was we distracting. talked about this in the first episode, actually. Do you know who, yeah. But do you know who else would be distracted by that? Who? Like staff of the of the school. Oh, so like cis straight people? Yeah. I'm just saying like, oh, like pe hmm. pepito. Hmm. I don't know if I can say the word. I'm gonna say, like, I'm pretty sure if you look up statistically. Um, so, who's the one sexualizing kids, though? Cis men are more more commonly pedialites than. Obviously, not. Pedialites? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can say the word. You know what I mean? Like, um, it is not trans people or gay people who are doing this stuff, it is predominantly cis straight men. Yeah, and people will argue the statistic that well, there are there are less trans people in the world and gay people in the world um, than there are straight cis people. But if you're just looking at that stuff, I just thought it was a good point to bring up. Like, I just thought it was weird that in middle school and in high school, you can't wear a specific, you can't see a bra strap. Couldn't wear yoga pants. Yeah. Couldn't wear yoga pants because oh no, not the boy teachers looking at a girl, a teenage student's butt. 
in yeah. tight pants. Couldn't wear leggings. Couldn't wear tight clothes as a girl. Also disguise it as the the boys in school growing up. I mean, sure, yeah, they're they're probably looking too, but you know, like I'm sorry if my shoulders are distracting you. Know, like, sorry, that, that's not my issue. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. I don't even know because she she's just so dumb. <laughs> like for real she's so dumb and she's so she always the, basically the entire thing she reiterates she just wants to not sexualize kids but you're worried about the wrong people it's your f- like even um taylor will bring up at some point and in, in the interview like do you not realize it's usually conservative men saying that the like the younger the woman the more fertile she is and the mm. more value she has yeah isn't that weird that's, that's a conserv- weird. that's a very very that's a weird common point. conservative take like where, like last episode. Yeah, and she'll just deflect. Be like, never heard of that. Never heard anyone say that. And then, uh, at one point, she's asked if she was ever sexualized in her life. She oh, says yeah. no. Then I laughed because, of course, not. You're fucking ugly. But she probably was. She's probably lying. But no, she she probably she probably was, and she's yeah. lying. But I just laughed because I was like. All right, you ugly bitch. <laughs> and like, like, I guess. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and I have girlfriends who have said that they were hit on more when they were younger and when they were teens versus um, now as adults. So, yeah. I mean, I guess that's where we'll end that today. Not me. I grew up ugly. So. <laughs> I grew up confused and transgender. So. I mean, I, I grew up ugly, but I was still sexualized, but not. I was always cute. But I, I'm still sexualized, so. So that is going to do it for today. You're welcome. That was actually like walking through hell. That was more painful than actually watching that. And that took us like three days to get through because we had to do it in chunks because it was so awful to listen to. Actually filming it was so much more this painful. This was so much worse. We have to we go. We have to go. I we think can't do it. I need. I need help. Uh-huh. I'm going to go uh, to a therapy session. You got a cigarette in a goddamn lighter. <laughs> you got a cigarette in a goddamn lighter. <laughs> yeah, <this> is, okay, <laughs> you get to uh, see the meme to understand that one. Yeah. <laughs> but... Anyways, uh, that was painful. I'm sorry for putting you guys through that. I wouldn't suggest watching the whole video, but I would suggest supporting Taylor Lauren. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to follow us on any of our platforms, all that will be in in the descriptions. And we will see you next week with another banger. And hopefully it is not as scary as this one. Let's do something lighter. Maybe something cringe. Maybe we should find something cringy and funny. Yeah, just so you're not just, just we got you. All right, I love painful. you. Love you guys. Love you. See you next week.